So once you figure out that when you fill up in this table all those uh, enthalpy okay, that we have calculated, what you have to do is just uh, multiply the product between N in multiply with H in and plus with everything and N out also multiply with the H out product. So in this case, what we shown here is that all the value that you got, you just multiply with the each specific enthalpy. So you got the N out, H out is actually, which is given here. So 3.35 multiply with 32, 63.55 multiply with 0, which is 0, plus 33.1 multiply with negative 0 0.1. So you uh, add up together, and then you minus the the product between 66.9 multiply with 35.7 plus 33.1 plus multiply with 1.16. So this is where actually it is uh, highlighted in this um, equation. Okay, so you'll be able to get in total, you get delta H is negative 2320 kilojoule per second. Okay, and then when you calculate that, then you'll be able to um, determine what will be the cooling rate required. So when you got it, it is given in the negative term, which means that there is a cooling happen. Okay, so this is actually the uh, cooling rate required in order for us to cool down, to condense from 65 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we finally calculate here and then we got the cooling rate at um, is given here. So that is the step that we supposed to follow. Okay, so if we could recall back, what happened is that in order for us to calculate the specific enthalpy or specific internal energy uh, associated with certain processes, then we can use this uh, particular formula for changing pressure at constant temperature. And with changing temperature, we can use either this formula which is this is for calculation of internal energy changes and this is for the calculation for specific for specific enthalpy changes okay or for solid or liquid then we can simply just use this particular equation right so we we can use the v delta p plus uh, the integral change from t1 to t2 cp dt but this is where actually for gases then we can use this particular equation straight away <coughs> So there are certain conditions that we have highlighted here. For example, like you can use this particular equation for ideal gas, but for non-ideal gas, it is valid only if the pressure is constant. Then we can use this. Otherwise, we have to use other kind of estimation, okay? Which I'm not going to cover in this video. Okay, so let's recall back the problem that we have. Um, I have given to you about the acetone changes, okay? The from the condenser of your part. Like there is a change of the liquid uh, for it, from the vapor to the liquid uh, being condensed, okay? And you have actually, uh, given that there are also changes of pressure, uh, of pressure, the changes of temperature, the changes of um, the changes of the temperature as well as the changes of phase happening. So we have to incorporate all of these things in order for us to calculate the energy balance. Right. So. In this case, where we want to choose, uh, so, but what is very important for us in order for us to solve this problem, we really need to choose what will be our reference state. So the reference state is actually by specifying what will be the phase as, as the temperature. And then we need to calculate all the enthalpy, specific enthalpy for all the component in all stream relative to this particular state. Okay, so we have to choose this particular state. This is our reference state the value at that reference state is ultimately is zero and the enthalpy but then we have to calculate in order for a calculate to the changes with respect to that we must calculate with respect to the reference state that we have chosen okay so for example like if let's say for a substance uh, which is a liquid at its reference state and a vapor in a process stream so we have to bring the liquid to the point at which we know the delta heat of lantern heat of vaporization and we vaporize the liquid and then we move the vapor to the process stream temperature. Um, and then only then we'll be able to finally sign up the individual changes. So for example, in this case, we have acetone at 50 degree, 56 degrees Celsius, which is the latent of vaporization. So if let's say it started at 20 degrees Celsius, 
180m, then we have to bring it to 56 degrees Celsius. And then there is a change of phase from liquid to vapor. And then after that, uh, we need to bring it down again to the acetone at 20 degrees Celsius, 180m. Okay, so um, this is what I have I discussed earlier. Then you can put up the calculation there, uh, which is given as 56 um, CPDT and the tension of vaporization and another CPDT for vapor phase.